Is this the tool that's gonna make life a whole lot easier? here so if you're ever in your shop and you drop the tiniest little lock washer or spring or bearing or nut and you search all over and you can't find it just go grab anything with a caster wheel on it and just roll it across the floor one time and it'll find that thing and it'll stop the wheel and, and skid it along the ass along your floor so here's a thorny problem how do you get a 12 foot mower through a 10 foot door oh, 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 it's So here's a trick I learned from my friend Tony, who uh, works for a fire department and they put on chains, take off chains all the time, as do we every time it snows, uh, is to make some metal or some metal, some wood blocks like this uh, that you can lay the crossbars in. That way you can adjust them a lot easier and get them tight the first time. So let's drive up on these. We'll do the fronts first and then, uh, and then we'll do the rears. So somebody asked in the comments this morning, what's the difference between a flex wing mower and a brush hog? I was talking about different ones. They're, they're essentially the same thing. The brush hog uh, is just a sink, has a single spinning blade like this in the center. It's a little bit more portable. You can get around in tight spots uh, real well with it. But as far as the Rhino implements, I believe that all the cutting mechanisms and the gearboxes and everything on mine anyway are the same. So this, is, this does what the brush mower does just uh, three times faster. I didn't realize all this stuff was stuck up underneath of here. That's a good thing I got it opened up. This will, uh, this will rust equipment out. It sits there all winter with moisture in it. We'll get the chains on and then we'll, we'll get all that cleared out of there. Mud and grass. It might not have been the best idea to put all my tire chains in one box here. I got my, got my icebreaker truck tire chains here all mixed up but I think we got the it's like we got the big ones are those the fronts or the rears I got the big ones in here look like this look like there's the springs those are the things that gave me so much trouble last year hopefully not this year oh no these are the big ones So if you have a front end loader, you don't need to use the wedge blocks on the front. You can just uh, jack it up with a loader bucket. Safety Sally time. Don't ever work under hydraulics if you can help it. Uh, get, a, uh, get a jack stand up underneath the axles. Then you can release the pressure and you're good. Now we can put the chains on and spin the Tires. I'll take it out of four-wheel drive too, so a little bit easier to spin. There we go. I know you're curious about this tool. It'll all come clear here in a minute. I'll tell you a funny story about tire chains. Back when I was younger, we were, went elk hunting. We used family used to go elk hunting for two weeks every year. And uh, I opening morning, I had a 75 Bronco, the, old, the little ones, old Fords. Oh, my favorite rig I think I ever had. Uh, and I, uh, opening morning, 
I uh, found this old uh, Jeep road and it went, I was hunting way up in Hell's Canyon, went down, 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 and I followed it, but I had, you know, it had locker differential and big tires and all that, so it was no problem. And uh, well, that thing sure did turn on me. And then, uh, uh, so I went off hunting, hunted all day. As soon as I dropped down off into the canyon, of course it started to snow. And by the time I got back later in the day, there was a foot of snow on the ground. Well, what was easy for me to get into going downhill in my Bronco was impossible to get out, right? And of course, because I was a knucklehead, I didn't have my chains with me. I had left them back at the camp and that was some miles away. I had to go walk back to the camp after hunting all day, put my chains on a pack board. If you know what a pack board is, it's like a frame backpack that you carry meat on down in that canyon, <laughs> four, four sets of heavy chains too, like these big truck chains here that I have made, made you know, everything I did was always overkill. And then put those chains on and still I couldn't get out and I spent most, the better part of the, week, the evening winching my way out of there about 75 feet at a time while it continued to snow, freezing cold. So the moral of the story is, um, I don't know that there is a moral, keep your chains. Keep your chains in there. So when putting on your chains, remember tight chains or happy chains. You want your chains to be as tight as you can get them, less likely to flop over and break something or it gives you better traction, it's even better on the tire. This isn't really the intended use of this, of this tool here, but you'll see in a minute, but it, it is kind of a nice byproduct. So I've got, I've got this down as tight as I can go. Now, you can, last year I had this little tail sticking out here and I had to wire them all up and they came loose a couple times and I think one of them flopped around and broke off one of the grease certs. I had these chains built for these specific tires and this just is just superfluous. This doesn't really need to be there. So I'm gonna, I got it on the very last link here, the right, right there, the, there's only one link to go in the crossbar and I couldn't quite get this front side tightened. So this has really helped. I can kind of pull the chains tight at least it kind of gets them going in the right direction. And then, cinch that up a little bit, and then I should be able to get the, that definitely helped. I can get my lock in there. Let's get this on there. Oh, I like that. That's gonna be, that's the way they, there we go. That is going nowhere. Let's, let's cut those things off. Those things are a pain. Chain's a whole lot easier and less dangerous to cut if you can put a little, little tension on it. That's better. This piece of junk almost got thrown in the scrap pile until, <laughs> until I realized I was using it backwards. So I, <laughs> it's like one of those Chinese puzzles. I, I was, I was trying to tighten here, right? Because these springs are so strong. You, I don't care how strong you are, unless you're like Magnus, uh, you, can't, uh, you, you can't pull them and hook them over the springs. And so I, I had this thing up backwards and the, the hook is facing the wrong direction and I would try to pull it. There wasn't enough stroke and it would run into the, <laughs> run into the clip. And I was looking at it, I'm like, you've got to be kidding me. This is about, this is going to take the cake for one of the worst pieces of equipment I've ever handled. And then I realized, <laughs> there you go. How about that? Now it locks. So now it's one of the best pieces of equipment. <laughs> so here, here's how it works. Okay. So you've got these springs, right? And they go up here. And so I've, I've, you know, last year I had uh, these long tails flopping around and it, well, it was just terrible. Uh, this year it's done properly. Okay. So here's how it works. You put this thing on here like this, right? And oh, the other way, you put it on here like this because it's always best on a binder to push down. You've got more strength that way. Um, problem being is you can't get it on here, right? <clears throat> the springs are just too tight. So no, no big deal. So what I've done is I just take a pry bar um, and just balance it on the lug nut and just compress the springs up a little bit. Um, and, then, um, and then I can poke that in there like that. All right, once I have that done, and this is the last one, it's much harder than the other ones. 
Boy, there's a lot of pressure on that. This is a good way to smash your fingers. Okay, so we messed up again. Look at that. Look what I've done. Oh, goodness. Can I get that off of there? <laughs> this is not an easy. What did I say half a day? Go ahead, scratch that and make it a uh, make it a whole day. Oh man. By not paying attention, I end up. You know, I'd had that off there and I'd use the bar by now. Good grief. All right, let's try this again. I had the spring on the wrong side of the binder. Okay, so it actually, when you use it correctly, it works pretty good. So that, what that does is that, that gives you the ability just to, we can stick these guys in there now, right? And voila. Now, still, we're not going to get that thing out of there. So here's where the bar comes in handy. So I just pull that up a little bit. Just get that out of there. And there we have Oh man, you fight for it. You fight for it, but it is good. We have a tensioning system. This, we got no chains flopping. I, I, I cut all these guys off. I cut them to three lengths, so they're exactly the same. I got the same spacing. I've got two bars between each one, except for the, the latch, which, but it all works out. And got these more in the center. So that is a properly installed chain and only about two hours later. The next one's gonna go faster. Are so heavy, are these chains, that you have to get in the middle and start at the top. Oh, I know why I never did, why I was so reluctant to take them off. It's always relearning every year. The... Yeah, if you want to know how to put chains on, talk to a trucker. Uh, those poor guys have to put them, take them off, put them on so many times. I always feel sorry for them every time they have to do that. It's a lot of work. Now you've got gravity helping you coming down both sides. Make sure they're centered. Make sure you don't have any crosses here. Good tractor chains like this. You can't just use regular chains because of the big lugs here. What happens is, is the if you just have single crossbars, they, they get down in here in between. It helps, but it's not as good as you should kind of sit on top. And it still happens to a certain extent with these type of tires. But having a double one here connected with these two links always kind of ensures that you have something. At least you have something sitting on top of a lug somewhere that's going to reach down there and bite. So they'll kind of settle in as you use them, but they're, they're, they're good. This is, this is, it wouldn't even be bad to have these connected here as well. I think that would be good too, but nonetheless. Now this is the important bit. Okay, so we, we don't use the block until we get the big chains on there. If you're just using if it's just a passenger car or something, you know, you can, these blocks, you can just drive right up on there and the chains are are so manageable, but not these great big ones. So what you want to do is kind of tuck that under there. We got this crossbar. We want this crossbar to fall into the groove here. So you kind of estimate as that rolls forward right there, exactly where that's going to be. And usually kind of the way I made it, it should fall right in there if we've done it right. Let's see how it goes. So with these great big tires, it's almost, it's almost nigh impossible to get them as tight, as tight without installing them, driving them around a little bit, have them kind of settled in. The last one, the one I've been looking for. So I have to tell you that this tool 
We, we started off with a little bit of a few problems for user error, but I have to say it's, uh, it's excellent. It's just excellent. I, I couldn't hardly, I couldn't, I couldn't get such a nice job or couldn't get everything so even um, without, without this. Uh, I tried to use a regular chain binder last time, but uh, it didn't have these little hooks on it. So a guy could make one of these here, but for what, 18 bucks or so, I don't know how it's worth it. Uh, but so that looks good. So I, last year, remember I had all the chains flopping and, and I had stuff wired on and all that. So what I did is I made sure that everything is fit the way I wanted it drove it around, made sure that it was seated in there, and then I cut off all those tails. Cut off the tails on the back, cut off the tails here, cut off the tails on the springs. So it's not so stiff that it's difficult to get on, uh, but it's really tight, they're really tight. Um, so no, no more problems, no more issues. I had a couple times in snowstorms, I think maybe I was, when I was plowing for the real Martian, I think that the, um, I hit some ice banks or clusters or something in it tore that wire off and then I had end of a chain flopping and one on the front, one on the back and I get to stop and dig out snow. So I want to be sure and to do it properly because I just don't want to be fiddling with this in the middle of the night in a snowstorm. So I feel real good about it. it fits, they fit really good. Everything uh, is nice and tight. It's going to be a lot quieter too. I'm not going to have the chink, chink, chink as it going around. But uh, this is great. This is, it was a, was a great tool once I figured out how to use it. But, uh, so that's two down. I have two more to go, so I'm going to spare you the details on that. So it'll be just be more of the same. So thanks for watching, and we'll see you guys on the next video.